Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to describe the process for creating IK leg controls. So I've got my character mesh in scene and I'm going to switch to the side view by holding down the space bar and choosing the right view from my marking menu. I'm working in the isometric side view uh, because I want to make sure that the joints I create are of a planar orientation. This is going to give the IK solver more stability. So whenever possible, if you can build your joints from the front side or top view, um, that's going to ensure that they are of a planar orientation. I'll turn on the joint tool creation by either going to the animation shelf and selecting the joint tool icon or by going to the skeleton menu within the animation module and choosing the joint tool. You want to make sure that your settings are at their default state so click on the reset tool if you've been using this already and then to make sure that the joints are visible as I create them um, over this mesh I'm going to turn the x-ray joints option on and that's going to just show the joints um, through the mesh. So I'll zoom in a bit and I'm generally going to place the joints at the position where the bones would exist in this character, but we don't have to represent every single bone with our virtual armature. So I'm going to start here at the hip, and then I'm going to place another joint at the knee. In order to give the mesh maximum mobility, I'm going to try to place the joints kind of in the midpoint of uh, the body um, whenever possible, so kind of between the front and the back of the knee. And generally that's going to give me the greatest flexibility when I start skinning the character later on. I'll create another joint here at the ankle, one more at the flex point of the foot, which I'll call the ball of the foot, and one more at the tip of the toes. And I'll hit enter to complete the operation. Next I'm going to bring up the outliner so that we can look at our hierarchy. And you can see that all of the joints are now visible in the hierarchy and I'm going to rename them. It's really important to come up with a naming convention and stick to it when you're working on character rigs. You're going to need to know the names of these joints later on for skinning and it just keeps your scene more organized. So I'll call this the left hip, L underscore hip. The next joint down will be L underscore knee. Then the ankle, L underscore ankle. Then the ball of the foot, L underscore ball. And then the tip joint, the tip of the toe, um, is not really going to be used to deform the mesh, but I'll still label it. I'll call it the left toe tip. Now, since I built the joint chain from the side view, I didn't orient it properly uh, from the front view. So I'm going to select that uh, root, the left hip, and just slide it over into position and I can look at this from the front view too just to make sure that it's at the midpoint um, of the leg. So this looks like about a good spot. Next I'm going to create some IK handles. That's going to allow us to uh, to pose this hierarchy based on the location of the foot. So the IK tools can be found again within the animation shelf tab or uh, again from the skeleton menu in the animation module. The first IK handle we're going to create should be an RP or rotate plane solver. The rotate plane solver allows the animator to adjust the twist value of the joints that are being controlled by the IK solver. So that's going to be something we'd need to do um, with this part of the leg. So I'll first click on the hip and then click again at the ankle. And I'm going to name this IK handle left ankle IK. So if I grab this IK handle, you'll see that it moves the hip and knee just as you'd expect. But one thing that isn't working quite right is that the entire foot is now rotating with the uh, lower part of the leg. So it's working correctly, but it's not creating the stability that we need to control this character's movement. So I'll hit the Z key to undo, uh, and it's going to return this IK handle to its initial creation position. And then I'm going to create a couple more IK handles to stabilize the foot. So again, I'll go to Skeleton, IK Handle Tool, Options. This time I'm going to choose a different type of IK Handle, the Single Chain Solver, which is useful when you don't need to control the twist value of the IK Solver. So this one will go from the ankle to the ball of the foot, and I'll create an additional handle from the ball of the foot to the tip of the toe. And I'm going to name these as well. So this is going to be the uh, left toe IK, and this is the left ball IK. So if I select all three of these IK handles, I can now move them together and you see that I have a very stable um, foot behavior. 
So this is great, but the animator can't be asked to modify the IK handles. Uh, for one, this isn't sort of the convention that animators are used to. They typically want to access curves. And also, these IK handles have non-zeroed values that um, don't really make any sense to the animator. The translation and rotation values are generated at non-zeroed values. And so um, the animator really needs to be able to return the character to a neutral pose just by hitting zeros in the channel box. So that's not going to work for the animator. So to control all these IK handles, I'm going to create a curve. I'll go to my Curves tab and select the uh, NURB circle. And I'm going to make sure that my interactive creation is turned off by going to NURB's Primitives, Interactive Creation, and toggling that off. We'll hit that again. So now we should see Circle Curve that was created at the origin. And I'm just going to move to the top view. And I'll position that curve at the location of the foot. So uh, then I'll scale that curve into position so that it's um, into a shape that's uh, visible and easy to access for the animators. And a lot of times I'll, I'll take it a step further. Um, I'm actually going to plant this on the ground plane, moving to the right view and grid snapping with the X key. And you could even shape the curves by right clicking over them, choosing control vertex, and then selecting the vertices and pulling them into position. So whenever possible, it's nice to try to uh, kind of synchronize the shape of the controls with the, with the mesh. And I'll name this left foot control. So you might see that when I created this circle, I actually also have another object, a shape node. And we're not going to talk about that right now, but it can be a little confusing looking at the hierarchy and seeing all these extra elements. So under display, I'm just going to turn off shapes and that's going to represent the curve just as a single element. And then in order to move all three of these IK handles at the same time, I'm just going to select all three of them and I'll middle mouse drag to parent them to the left foot control. So now when I move the left foot control, you can see it pulls all three of the IK handles along together. So the next step is to add some attributes that will allow us to flex and pivot various different parts of the foot. So I'm going to do that by selecting the foot control and one step that I've forgotten, I can see, is that I haven't zeroed out my foot control values. I created it at the origin and moved into position, but didn't zero it out. So I really should zero it out before I start parenting anything to the hierarchy. So I'm going to select these IK solvers and just middle mouse drag in this open area here, and that will unparent them. And I'm going to select the curve for the foot and go to Modify Freeze Transformations, and I'll also delete the history, delete by type history for the selected curve. And this is just going to make that foot control a clean um, object that doesn't have any extra history, and it's going to allow the animator to zero it back into the correct position. Now I'll parent the IK controls under the foot control, again middle mouse dragging them, and I'm going to start uh, controlling some pivot points. So basically what I want to allow the animator to do is to shift the weight um, onto different areas of the foot, flexing the toe, uh, peeling the foot off the ground from the ball of the foot, that sort of thing. And to do that, we're going to uh, take advantage of some pivot groups that we'll introduce into the hierarchy here. So first, let's select our left ball IK and left toe IK. And we'll create a new group, which is going to sit between the foot control and these uh, IK solvers. We'll just do control G. And we want to make sure that the pivot point for this group is at the ball of the foot. So I'm going to hit the insert key and vertex snap that pivot point right at the location of the, the joint at the ball of the foot. And this we will call the left uh, toe tap pivot. So by rotating this pivot, you can see that I'm actually dragging the uh, toe IK along. And the ball IK is actually rotating in its position. And in truth, rotating an IK handle doesn't really uh, affect the behavior of the joints. But pulling this um, IK handle around from a specific pivot point is really what I want to achieve here. So that's going to allow the animator to tap the character's toe. And we're going to do something similar with the ankle IK. We're going to select the ankle IK create a group by choosing control G again. Once again, this group is between the foot control and the IK uh, handle. And once again, we're going to move the pivot point exactly to the location of the ball of the foot. So I'm vertex snapping, um, having pressed the insert key to move the pivot and uh, vertex snapping with the V key to move it. 
And once it's in position, I'll return to the Rotate tool by hitting E on the keyboard. And now you can see that when I rotate this in a positive value, it's peeling the back of the heel off the ground. So I'm going to call this the Left Heel Peel Pivot. So all of these controls are still accessible under my master controller. And it's really a good idea to figure out where this pivot point belongs as well. Uh, because this was a circle, it's currently just at the center of the foot. That's not really the ideal position for most of the movement in a walk cycle. Um, so I'm going to actually hit the insert key again. I'm going to slide this pivot point back to the contact point at the heel of the foot. So I like to move into the uh, side view and that's going to be pretty perfect. And now if I again return to rotate, hitting the E key, I'm out of pivot mode now. Um, when I rotate the control, it's going to uh, pull the entire uh, set of IK handles based on that pivot. And I'll create a couple more pivots like this. So now that I have these subfoot pivots doing what I want, I can actually create an additional group above them but again below the foot control. So I'll hit control G again to create a new group. And once again, I'm going to move the pivot point here to the midpoint of the foot at the ball of the foot. So we have a lot of pivot points at the ball of the foot, but I like to have this one to move the entire foot as a unit for sort of that side to side swivel um, movement that maybe you'd have if a character was snuffing out a cigarette or something like that. Um, so I'll name this the left swivel pivot and I'll create another group, this time a parent to this swivel pivot, Control-G. So you can see our hierarchy is really just a bunch of groups, and um, these new groups are moving all the IK handles together, um, and we're just determining where the pivots are of use. So I'm going to move this pivot point to the tip of the toe, right about here where the, uh, the foot bone is. Maybe I could even shift it down to the ground plane and this is going to allow the character to uh, peel the foot right off of the ground. So I'll call this the left toe tip pivot. And I'll create one last pivot group, control G, uh, at the location of the ankle. So I'm going to hit the insert key again. I'll vertex snap this to the ankle joint and now when I rotate this pivot group um, you'll see that it pulls the entire foot down. So this would be good if the character's legs were hanging off the edge of a pool or something like that, and you wanted to rotate from the sort of natural kind of FK position for that joint. So this one will be called the left ankle pivot. And so now I have all these pivot uh, groups in place, and I can manipulate the foot in a number of ways, but I have to do it by um, going through the hierarchy and selecting these groups. Some animators will actually build these as curves. Remember, a visible curve is really just the same as a, a group transform. It just has a, a curve associated with it. Um, but for us, I'm going to try to associate all the behavior for the foot with this one single control. And to do that, I'm going to add some custom attributes. So I'll go to Edit Add Attribute from my channel box, and I'm going to make a custom attribute to represent each of these pivots. So I'll just start here at the bottom. This is going to be toe tap. And then I'll make one for the heel peel. And then I'll make a swivel attribute. All these attributes, by the way, are of the float data type, which is a, a decimal, floating point decimal, positive and negative. So that's exactly what we'd need to adjust the rotation values on these, uh, these groups. And then I'll, I'll add a toe tip. And finally, I'll add an ankle attribute. So these attributes don't currently do anything. So our next step is to connect the attributes to the rotation values of our pivot groups. And we're going to use the connection editor to do that. We'll go to Window, General Editors, Connection Editor. And um, the connection editor will uh, show the selected object loaded here on the left. Um, and you'll see a whole lot of attributes, and this can be really confusing, so you might want to turn the non-keyable attribute visibility off, and that will just show what's in the channel box. And then I'm going to be connecting these custom attributes to uh, a pivot that I'm going to load here on the right side. So I'll select the left ankle pivot, reload it here on the right. Again, if you're confused by all this um, information, you can go to right 
display and choose non keyable and that's just going to show what is accessible here in the channel box and I'm going to connect the ankle to the proper rotation axis so in this case for the left ankle pivot I want to be rotating the X value so I'm just going to connect these and once connections made you'll see that it'll highlight in yellow here in the channel box and that it will italicize um, both of the attribute names um, here in the connection editor so if I were to select the uh, foot control now and modify this ankle value by middle mouse dragging here in the viewport you can see that it's actually driving the rotation value of my pivot group which is exactly what I want so I'm going to repeat these steps for the other pivot groups. I'll select the toe tip, find the toe tip pivot loaded here on the right. Once again this is going to be an X rotation. So this is going to let the animator lift the character's foot from the location of the toe. For the swivel pivot, which I'll load on the right next, I actually want to drive the Y rotation value. So you can see that that lets us drive that sort of squash side to side rotation. I'll load the heel peel pivot on the right. This is also going to be an X rotate connection. So there is the heel peel. And finally, I'll connect the toe tap pivot again to the rotate X attribute. So now the animator can access all these different pivot points just by selecting the main control curve and they won't have to worry about uh, any of these hierarchy elements at all. So as the final step we're just going to create a knee control that will allow the animator to modify the orientation of the uh, IK solver that controls the hips and uh, knee of the, of the leg. So we'll create another control curve. We'll just go to curves and choose a new circle and I'm going to just vertex snap this circle to the location of the knee joint and then move it up in front and a lot of times I'll scale and rotate this as well um, just to get it into a, a more usable position and once it's in the right position I'll freeze its transforms and I'll also delete its history and I'll name this left knee control and I'm going to connect this to the IK handle twist value. Remember this uh, IK handle from the hip to the ankle is an RP or rotate plane solver. So it gives the animator access to this twist control. So rather than accessing the twist control, I'm going to use this control to drive the orientation of that leg. So I'll select the left knee control, shift select the left ankle IK handle, and I'm going to create a constraint under constrain and it's going to be a pull vector constraint. And now when I move this curve around, it's going to drive the, uh, the orientation or the twist of that, uh, of that section of the leg. And I typically like to have this control parented to the foot because generally the knee orientation changes with the foot orientation. So with the left knee control selected, I'll shift select the foot control and hit P to parent it. So you can see our full hierarchy here in the Outliner now. And then I will lock and hide uh, the unusable attributes for, um, for the leg setup. So for example, the scale and visibility attributes don't really need to be keyframed by the animator. So I'm going to right click and choose Lock and Hide Selected. And for the left knee control, it's only the translation values that matter. So I'll lock and hide everything else. Again, select those channels and choose Lock and Hide selected. And with those attributes hidden, our leg setup is complete. So I hope this tutorial was helpful, and if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And I'd also encourage you to check out my other tutorials on lynda.com. Thanks for watching.